Hi, ho guys and girls. Welcome back to Dinner Tools. We got all your recall updates for August and September 2023. First off, we got Generac recalling more than 60,000 generators over burn risk. Okay, now the two generators, there's several models involved, and I'm going to link to the, the government specs and everything on all this. But we got the Generac 1500 and we've got the Generac 17.5. Now, there again, 60,000 of these sold in the US, some in Canada as well. What can happen is the fuel tank won't vent properly. And I think what's going on is it's it, somehow it's too close to a hot part of the engine and it's heating up, causing pressurization of the fuel tank and it starts ejecting uh, fumes and vapor, which of course, if it hits something hot, like it says right there, that, <clears throat> you know, that's a essentially a fuel air bomb at that point. Uh, they And they have, let's see here, we got 64,000 generators being recalled. Uh, it, here's all the models here, I'm, the, the different model types that go through it. They have had injuries with this. Uh, we've had 27 incidents of the generator overheating and pressurizing, expelling fuel when opened, including three incidents resulting in severe, severe burns and injuries. These are generators going from April 2011 through June 2023. So this goes back for over a decade that these have been sold. Uh, the, anyway, uh, I will put a link to this down below. You can check your model numbers, see if it's involved. They say if you have this generator, you should stop using it immediately and reach out to Generac for uh, some recall information on that. You know, if you didn't know, Generac actually had an issue last year. Finger <laughs> amputation and crushing injuries. Uh, unlocked handle can pinch consumers and the fingers against the generator frame when the generator is moved, posing a finger amputation and crushing hazard. So this was 321,000 generators last year, uh, 4,500 sold in Canada. I'll put a link to this one also. They're not the only ones. Honda's having problems. Now, not on nearly as many. They're claiming it's only on 250 of these units. But this is the big boy. This is the, the top of the line for Honda's, uh, their uh, super quiet uh, inverter tech generators. This is the EU 7000 IS. Uh, you're looking at, uh, again, fuel, fuel uh, filler cap not properly seated can result in vapors leaking and fire hazard as well. Now, Honda, not the only Honda product. We got another one. The Honda American or America Honda recalls lawnmower and pressure washer injuries due to injury hazard. Now, with this one, it's the starter rope. When you grab the starter rope and pull it, a, uh, a problem with the camshaft can cause it to retract suddenly, posing an injury hazard. Now, if you're in my age, back in the day, that was a pretty common occurrence with, with pull starts on engines. They would just rip it right out of your fingers sometimes. Uh, this, this affects 3,000, three, I'm sorry, 391,000 units. Uh, it was just posted on the 14th. We're looking at uh, Honda recalling, you know, this may be one of the reasons why Honda's getting out of the small engine market. Uh, if you haven't seen that, we got a video on that from last year. Uh, but these were sold at uh, Ace, at Home Depot, at Lowe's, at Northern Tools, a, a bunch of farm and ranch stores across the United States and Canada. Uh, they were sold pretty much for the last year, uh, from this year back through uh, May of, of last year here. So if you've got a pressure washer or a lawnmower that has a, one of the uh, a Honda engine on it, you should check this out. Again, links will be down below. Now, next up, we got DR Power Equipment Recalls. Uh, their power chipper shredder has a lash, laceration hazard. I mean, it is a chipper shredder. Now, uh, apparently, people uh, pieces of metal can come loose from the inside of the shredder's housing and get ejected, posing a laceration. That sounds like a shrapnel hazard, really. This is affecting 5,900 units, uh, about 90 units in Canada. If you bought one of these bigger chipper shredders here from uh, DR Power, uh, you should probably check that out. All right, steel, their MSA 300 chainsaws. This is one of their, you know, one of their popular chainsaw models here. They've got an issue where the chainsaw brake takes much longer than than is expected. Basically, the brake isn't slowing down the 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 chain fast enough uh, after disengaging the throttle on it. Uh, the 2,800 units. Um, Let's see here, you should stop using it immediately, bring it into a steel uh, servicing center for free repl replacement of the brake drum. No injuries have been reported. I think this is just one of those cases, you know, out of an abundance of caution kind of thing. Now here's one, We now we cover a lot of e-bikes here on the channel, so I wanted to throw this in here. Electric, which is one of the biggest sellers in e-bikes right now, they're recalling 
45,000 e-bikes due to faulty brake calipers, which, you know, if an e-bike is, they can get going. A lot of people think they're super heavy. They're not that heavy. They usually average under 50 pounds. Um, they're not super lightweight, but uh, the fact of the matter is, though, you usually have a higher sustained speed on an e-bike than you do on a regular bike. Uh, so, uh, yeah, brakes are important. I can tell you it's one of the biggest issues with the e-bikes that we deal with uh, for my family. Argo has to recall their all-terrain, their ATVs, due to a fire hazard. Again, kind of the same thing as Honda was dealing with. We And uh, at Generac, we got uh, the check valves and vent hoses are leading to fuel overflow, po posing a fire hazard. Again, they're building up back pressure and ejecting fuel. Guess who else is dealing with this? We got Polaris. Uh, we got some snowmobiles here. The, okay, this one's different. They're claiming the handlebar hooks on this one are uh, pose a puncture hazard. And, and I'm not a big snowmobiler, but I'm guessing that's the little thing at the end there that keeps your hand from coming off in the cold. Uh, apparently, people are getting shish -kabob. Are they actually getting shish -kabob? Let's see here. Uh, four reports of puncture wounds uh, caused by impact with the handlebar hooks. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Now, the next one, which is bomb bombardier bombardier i can never pronounce that uh there's ski and link snowmobiles they're the ones having the the fire leak uh, uh hazard and i can tell you last year i you know we're based mainly in montana and i can remember several cases with uh with uh, snowmobiles catching on fire over the winter not sure if these were the exact ones but i do know it's a big issue 40 4, in the u.s 3,000 in canada um the six reports of snowmobile fuel leaks no injuries have been reported uh, so if you're, if you're into that, you better go check it out. Apollo scooters. Now we've reviewed Apollo scooters here on the channel. It was a, one of the bigger higher end ones than this, but here's what I can tell you. So the issue here is a bolt on the scooter can come loose ca causing the suspension and wheel assembly to separate. These things are incredibly fast for scooters. All right. They are Scare, basically the one that, that they sent us, we did a test on it, we checked it out, we thought it'd be cool. It was too fast. Nobody nobody wanted to ride it. We ended up uh, giving it away to somebody that we knew. Uh, nobody wanted it. It was it, it was absolutely, you know, felt like it was death on wheels. Now the bolt is going to come loose and the wheel is going to go fly it off. These things are ridiculous. Uh, I cannot even imagine riding one daily, much less having that, that happen. Anyway. Be safe. Now, another thing that we've reviewed, not this model, but Apier, there we did a uh, review of their Seagull version, which I think is the updated version of this. This is an older model here. Uh, anyway, the, about 22,000 units. Uh, apparently, if you try to plug in the charging cord, but don't plug it into the adapter, there's some sort of loop that gets created and can cause the battery to overheat. So they've, they've got a recall on that. So if you've got one of these, check it out. Green recalls 1.56 million dehumidifiers. I know these are really popular unit. Uh, they're going to give you immediate, they, they want them back. They can overheat, smoke, catch fire. Uh, they 1.56 million units. That's, that's a lot of units, folks. Uh, again, look at this. We got, it was sold under the Kenmore. It was sold under GE. Uh, Solaris Air, Seabreeze, Norpol. Wow, there's a lot of these things. Uh, they have 23 fire incidents, 688 incidents of it overheating, and $168,000 in property damage caused by these. If you have one, if you have a dehumidifier, uh, I would check this link. Uh, if they may not all look like this, as I said, they were sold under a lot of different names. It looks like there's a couple different models and different. Like, give the, yeah, there's a bunch of different versions of this thing. If you have any kind of dehumidifier, check the link below. Make sure that you, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm giggling because of the next one. But if you got a dehumidifier, check on this. The next one is, well, it's fireworks. If you've got a recall on fireworks, oh my gosh, under the brand American Glory, and I kid you not, America AF. <sighs> Uh, they can explode prematurely. You know, there's a pill for that. Uh, posing explosion and burn hazards, consumers and bystanders. Uh, 2,400 uh, units were sold. Uh, I'd be stunned if any of these are still out there and were not actually. But anyway, 72 reports of fireworks prematurely exploding. No injuries have been reported. 
they were sold mostly in Valdosta, Georgia, Flint, Michigan, Pahrump, Nevada. That's just down the road from me right now. And online at Red Apple. Can you buy? I didn't know you could buy fireworks online. That's that's uh, that's weird. Uh, and they were reported through Vegas. Of course they were. Anyway, if you've got any leftover fireworks, check that out. This one, this is a personal pet peeve of mine. For those of you who don't know, uh, and if you follow the links, uh, you go check out the links below any video. If you scroll further down, there's a link to a book in there called The Home Distiller's Workbook, Workbook, Your Guide to Making Moonshine, Whiskey, Vodka, Rum, and so much more. Just happens to be the best-selling book ever on how to home distill. Guess who's the author? So this is, is a something that's near and dear to me, and that is the use of carboys, and they're mainly used for... Uh, home brewing and stuff like that. And I, I've said for years, I've been an outspoken advocate of, I almost feel like we should ban them. They're just such a hazard. They're, so, they're a waste of money. They're a hazard. Uh, they they can break. And when they break, they they, they break, uh, they don't like shatter. They like leaf, like uh, almost like, you know, if you were chipping obsidian or something like that, trying to create a, uh, you know, a knife or something like that. And they create just molecular thin razor blade type edges on it. They're incredibly dangerous. If you do a search on Google for carboy accident or laceration, uh, make sure you have your, your, your filter set to on. Otherwise you'll see some really terrible images. Uh, anyway, the, you should never be using them. This now this is Saxo. They've got 8,000 of these things. They were, they were calling because they weren't tempered properly. You shouldn't be using any glass carboys. There's plenty of, of food safe plastic out there. It's cheaper. It's easier. It's easier to get it clean and they never break and, and hurt you with them. And it, it's just glass carboys are for pretentious snobs who are going to end up in the ER. That There I said it. All right, and we got the Razor here, Polaris. This is a huge one, the Polaris RZR XP Turbo and Turbo S. This is one of their biggest sellers here. You're looking at the model year 2021. Uh, what do we got here? The clutch can fracture, basically turning into shrapnel, just exploding and ejecting pieces, ripping out fuel lines, stuff like that. Uh, you're looking at 27,000 of these, 600 in Canada. They were actually previously recalled. They're getting recalled again. Uh, you're looking at 206 reports of clutch failures, including six fires, two injuries, and one vehicle tip over. Uh, good grief. Uh, let's see here. What else we got? We got the, the, the Polaris, the Bobcat utility vehicles, the gravelly utility vehicles, fuel pump kits, and fuel tank assemblies due to fire hazard. Uh, again, we got a fuel leak can occur, occur when the fuel pump outlet connector, the fuel tank near a hot surface posing a fire hazard. We're looking at 12,300 units. Uh, let's see here. The looks like uh, 517 were sold in Canada. Um, incidents. No injuries are reported. Again, this is going to be one of the cases where someone's noticed it can happen and they're trying to fix it ahead of time. And then the last one we got for you is Best Buy is recalling their Insignia and Yardbird fire tables. Get this. The lava rocks they used. Uh, I don't know what they did, but the raw, they can split and eject. Basically, the lava rocks can explode. Uh, nothing like sitting there having drinks with the uh, missus on a nice evening and having the lava rock shrapnel, you know, right into your leg or something. I don't know. Let's see if there's any actual injuries with it. Um, let's see here. Da, 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 da. No reports of injuries, but they re had reports, two reports of lava rocks splitting and ejecting from the table. Uh, there's been, uh, anyway, so again, it's not a big deal. It doesn't look like, uh, 1,490 units. They probably just send you new lava rocks. Anyway, if you like this, hit the like button for me and leave a comment. Uh, and if, as, if this is popular and people like this stuff, we'll try and do one of these updates once a month to stay on top of all the recalls that happen. Again, we're going to cover tools and other tool related, basically stuff that's related to what we cover here on the channel. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. Hey, Anthony, thanks for uh, calling, by the way, and giving me the tip. We got a Grizzly video coming up with some uh, later this week. We got a, they're having a big closeout, a tax break sales, a bunch of stuff going on over grizzly.com. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. You all take care. God bless. And as always, shine on.